Okay, guys, uh, join Jules, uh, Uncle Brad, Cigars and Vino. We're doing old versus new. And the old is going to be absent. But more importantly, you're going to be doing the Corpse Reviver number two. Um, and I have a new twist using absent. So we'll get into the history. But Uncle Brad, we're going to do our cocktails first. So we have something to sip on. Now, the thing about absinthe is, is that it plays a minor role in the Corpse Reviver. But anytime absinthe uh, hits the stage, it's hard not to notice. Interesting thing about the Corpse Reviver is the Corpse Reviver is, is actually, it's a family of cocktails, not one cocktail. So I'm going to make the Corpse Reviver number two, but there is a bunch of Corpse Reviver cocktails behind that. There's a, well, there, there's one in front of it called the number one, <laughs> and then there's the number three, and then there's the Corpse Reserve. Corpse Reviver Blue and all kinds of different variations on the Corpse Reviver. What's really cool about the Corpse Reviver is it is indeed a classic cocktail. So there's a guy out there and those of you who are in the cocktail know, know this guy named Henry or Harry Craddock. And he was this famous bartender from the early 1900s. And he has a book called the Savoy Cocktail Book and probably a few others. And the Corpse Reviver dates at least back to 1930, which those of you who are history buffs are like, well, how can absinthe be there? Because wasn't absinthe banned? And there's an answer for that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But absinthe was actually never banned in England. And so the Savoy is in England. And that's where these cocktails were invented. So is that it's a drink of equal parts. There's four main ingredients and one minor ingredient. And those ingredients are gin. Uh, Lillet or like kind of like a white vermouth. I'm using Koki Americano. So you can mm, see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And an orange liqueur, which you can use triple sec. You can use curacao. I'm going to use dry curacao. So it's an orange liqueur that I happen to like. You've got uh, lemon juice and always you're going to want to use fresh lemon juice. And of course, a little absinthe rinse. So let's get into making the cocktail. You're gonna want a chilled coupe glass because you want the drink to stay cold uh, when it's in the, in the glass, even though we're gonna shake it with ice. So I'm going to fill up my cocktail shaker here, the small side with ice. Got my cocktail shaker. I'm gonna take a little bit of absinthe here um, and rinse the glass. So when you rinse a glass with absinthe, Super easy if you have like an atomizer, something that will kind of give a little squirt. Uh, some people will say one squirt, others will say three to four. It really depends upon preference. I'm gonna put a little in the glass and this is the total normal way to do this. I'm just gonna kind of roll it around, right? I'm just gonna roll it around in there. Um, you know what, I would suggest you dump it because absinthe can be very strong and uh, you know it's, and we're gonna find out here just how strong that is. So it can actually, ruin your taste buds if you drink it first. I'm going to dump that out. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add the ingredients. So I'm going to start with the lemon juice because I heard somebody say this the other day. They said, start with the cheap ingredients first because if you mess up, then you don't have to spend so much when you start over. I'm like, hmm, that's pretty brilliant. So I'm okay. going to go up to three quarters of an ounce here in my graduated uh, jigger. And this is a Japanese style jigger. So I got three quarter ounce lemon juice. I'm going to go with gin. Use again is depending upon your preference. Um, but a nice juniper forward gin would be great or a citrusy gin because you've got citrus in there. Mm -hmm. Orange liqueur, three quarters ounce of orange liqueur. Recipe for uh, the Corpse Survivor number two used Lillet Kina, which is like a, um, it's like a white vermouth with a little quinine in it. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't make that anymore. And so uh, the closest thing they say is this uh, Koki Americano. So let's put my cookie in there. Shake. There you double strain because you don't want the ice oh, shards yeah, to continue to dilute the drink. And that. Look at that. Is the Corpse Reviver. Number, number two. Got a little yeah, that looks fabulous. How is okay. it? It's good. It is delicious. So Corpse Reviver, it's, it's, it's on the tart side but not overly tart the the lemon juice is balanced really nicely by the sweetness of the orange liqueur and um the vermouth the white vermouth you know this coqui americano 
kind of mellows it out. It's really a fortified wine. Somebody's probably going to shoot me for saying white vermouth. Yeah. It's, it really <laughs> kind of mellows out. It gives it a good mouth feel. So you've got this like citrus and a little hint, uh, hint of anise, which is coming from the absinthe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course the gin is really clean in there. And so it's, it's this like well-balanced citrusy drink. So, um, I made this cocktail. It doesn't have a name. Um, but what we're going to be making is, uh, a cocktail with mezcal, absinthe, maraschino liqueur, chartreuse, coconut milk, lime juice, and a marigold simple syrup. Whoa. Yeah, I know. The only thing really that's complex in this is the marigold simple syrup. Um, and that's just taking the leaves of the marigold flower with um, equal parts sugar and water. So top. There you go. Kind of like um, a last word or uh, last of the Oaxacans because a, a last of the Oaxacans is with mezcal, I believe, instead of gin. So kind of like that, we're using mezcal. Um, we're going to do an ounce and a half of mezcal, three quarters of an ounce of chartreuse. Mm. And then I'm going to do a half ounce of maraschino liqueur. I'm going to do a quarter of an ounce of absinthe because like you said, little goes a long way. Um, and you don't want it to overpower and almost ruin your drink just with its power flavor, right? And then we're going to do a half ounce of lime juice, half ounce of simple syrup, that marigold simple syrup. And I, I do think that a regular simple syrup would work here, but I definitely think it needs a simple syrup. Um, and then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of coconut milk. Nice. Kind of looks good. Then we're going to shake our cocktail. Using this cute, cute glass I just got. Pour this into our glass. Looks, it's like, it's, it's green because of the chartreuse, but it's like a creamy green. So it's, mm. it's, I, it looks good. We're going to just put a little bit of some fresh nutmeg on there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then the hydrated citrus. Yeah. And there you have it. Brilliant. So you, you can't really see it. And if I tip it, it yeah. will. Cheers. Now that we have our cocktails, um, I'd love to hear the history behind the green fairy absinthe. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> so what's interesting is uh, a lot of things actually about absinthe. First thing is this, is that absinthe is boozy. It is a boozy, mm -hmm. boozy, boozy drink. So absinthe uh, is anywhere between 45% and 74% alcohol by volume, which if you're uh, keeping score, that's 90 to 148 proof. And, yeah. um, you know, when you take booze off of a still straight, you know, you're, you're looking in the, in the 150 proof range, depending on the still, you could get much higher, you'd be lower, mm -hmm. but that's like, there's not a lot between you and just straight drunkenness <laughs> when it comes to absinthe which is probably why, uh, you know, it got into a little bit of trouble. So mm -hmm. what's interesting about absinthe is that it's actually, it's, it's not a product of France. It's actually a product of Switzerland. Uh, that's where it came from back in the late 1700s. Whoa. And yeah, I know. Late 1700s. And then, um, you know, it's not like Switzerland's very far from France. It made its way well, that's true. Uh, yeah, into France and, um, absinthe, uh, like many liquors or, or alcohols, you know, started out as kind of medicinal. So the French military would give absinthe to the troops to ward off malaria. And, um, you know, I mean, if there's one thing the military will do way back then is if there was a problem, they'd throw booze at it. So, um, you know, there was seems like the reasonable you know, I, way to do it. You know, Dutch courage. <laughs> they'd give yeah. a shot of uh, gin Perfect. to the Dutch before they go into battle. So, I mean, there's booze has a, a very strong uh, history with, with the military um, in, in, in a very good way, in, in my opinion. So the, the troops uh, in the French troops, they, they, they start bringing home their, their taste for absinthe, right? So they, they leave the military, they come home, they start bringing home their taste for absinthe. And so absinthe starts to grow, you know, and become more and more popular in, uh, in France in the mid 
into late 1800s. And then the cool kids, you know, got a hold of it in France, the, the artists, the writers, the, the people who are very culturally sophisticated. And that was more Spanish. But either way, you know, so these cool kids get a hold of it. And then right around 1880, uh, absinthe uh, starts to become mass produced. And so it becomes cheaper. And now it's really taken off up through the early 1900s until it was banned. So we'll talk about the ban in a second. Let's back the bus up a little bit. Let's go back 50 years. So while the French were out uh, protecting the country, uh, you know, from invaders and off the war and drinking their, their absinthe uh, to ward off malaria, this little aphid from America <laughs> makes its way over to France. And uh, the aphid meets other aphids. They rock, they roll, they have some fun, they have some drinks. Pretty soon the aphids are laying eggs and they're all over the, uh, the vines in France. Destroys the wine industry in France. Okay. So it was called the Great Wine Blight. So French winemakers were a little upset, right? Their, their livelihood um, is, is They were now, pissed. Yeah, they were pissed. And, uh, and then, you know, now we're going to, take the bus forward again. And now we're back to 1905. This very public murder takes place where a husband killed his wife. And um, yes. I know, very sad. And he happened to be drinking absinthe, right? And so, so you know, that absinthe got linked to the murder. The French winemakers spun that story. And because absinthe was more so popular and they're trying to make their wine come back, it ends up killing off the uh, absinthe craze, because, you know, by that time, you've got this sober curious movement going, or maybe mm -hmm. what's called sober insistent, you know, let's fast forward another 30 years, we had a prohibition. And uh, yes. absinthe just, boom, it's done. Absinthe makes you crazy, it makes you violent. And so it gets banned, it gets banned in France, it gets banned in America. And, uh, you know, this is back in like 1915, 1912 timeframe, not in England, which is why I think the absinthe showed yeah. up in <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know it's starting to get banned all over the world well it took a hundred years for absinthe to make a comeback and the first commercially available wow. absinthe was produced again in the czech republic back in the late 1990s and it wasn't very good right um <laughs> and then absinthe started popping up in other countries in 2007 the united states lifts their ban on absinthe 2007 2007 yeah the u.s oh lifted the ban on absinthe forbidden. and so now absinthe is starting you know because it's just like oh, this forbidden thing this forbidden fruit you couldn't get right and everybody's like oh wow absinthe is really great i'm gonna try this stuff we're like <laughs> yeah yeah like, it. like, no it's supposed to be green because of the green anise and how it's made right um, if it's not you know it's really the flavor that you're going for and it'll louche when you put it in the glass. So if you've ever seen an absinthe fountain and that goes into an absinthe glass and that absinthe glass is a little ball that fills up with the perfect amount of absinthe and then you pour water on top of that and it will go from green, yeah. green to this opaque kind of yellowish green. So absinthe takes off because it's so kind of cool. And just like the cool kids back in like late, you know, late uh, 1800s, you know, the cool kids in America, you know, all over the world, they're very sophisticated drinkers. They start to get this taste for absinthe and absinthe just takes off again. Now it's like there's tons of variety of absinthe. And there's a lot right. of great ones out there. And there's a lot of them that don't taste so great. So my advice to you is if you're interested in absinthe, don't be scared of it. It is going to knock you on your butt <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you drink mass quantities of it because it is very strong. But mix a little water in. It's great for a cocktail. It's great for infusing with cocktails. Sazerac, yep. Corpse Reviver. Um, yeah. But that's the story of absinthe so wow. so no no uh hallucinogenics that they used to put in there and now that no, now they that, don't. You know, that's just that's just a load of crap it doesn't make you hallucinate yeah i guess wormwood if you you know consume a lot of wormwood you can start to hallucinate that's not going to show up like it just you're gonna be dead before you hallucinate from drinking absinthe <laughs> well that is absinthe i know it's one of my favorite months spooky season and i think absinthe should at least be tried um, during this month. So whether you do my cocktail, the corpse reviver, we talked about the death in the afternoon. Um, there's a lot of great cocktails. I'm doing some for the 31 days of cocktail recipes. I will tell you, um, for those of you who just met uncle Brad, for those who are seeing him again, I can't stress it enough. And it's, it's my favorite tagline, um, which is make 
a cocktail right the first time and you'll know what good tastes like. And that goes into old versus new, because once you know the old, you'll definitely know how to make something new. So um, make sure that you hit like, subscribe, turn on alerts on YouTube, whatever it is that you need to do on YouTube, but follow and subscribe, um, comment any questions you have, we'll get back to them. And then remember on Instagram and TikTok, I'm join underscore jewels and on Instagram cigars and vino for uncle Brad. Um, so follow us, ask us questions and make cocktails with us. Uh, cause it's a lot of fun. So cheers. Cheers. Thank you.